Hello there, people of the internet. Recently, I've got some questions from people wondering how to use an oscilloscope and an audio generator to test different circuits and devices. So, that's what we're going to talk about today. But before we do that, if you haven't seen my previous videos explaining, you know, audio uh, oscilloscopes and audio generators in depth and kind of how to use them and calibrate them and a couple things more, I would recommend giving them a watch first, especially if you have no knowledge or experience with them. I'll throw a link down to the playlist and some of the videos down in the, de down in the description, and I'll probably throw one of those tag bubble things up in the corner here. So let's begin. Now here I have a schemat schematic and a really basic circuit. For whatever you're testing, it's good to have a schematic as it makes things easier. If you want to get like some electronics device, you can easily Google them on the internet, you know, whatever you're wanting to test, the name of it, maybe the, or the model number, followed by schematic. But here I have a very, very, very simple circuit with basically the audio generator here, that's the symbol for it, so this guy here a resistor, or more to be more specific, a 1K resistor, and a diode. So, for starters, let's just say I wanted to test across the diode, and I wanted to see the wave and the signal that it's getting and manipulating. So, what I can do is I can take my scope leads and put them somewhere specific to get uh, the specific waveform and measurements that I want. Now also to make this kind of easier, I've put dots at kind of each point, and I've also put a plus and a minus. You know, kind of the plus represents the red wire here, and the minus kind of represents the negative. Now technically this is an AC wave, so there really is no plus or minus, but again, this is kind of done to help make things easier. So, you know, for those per electronic professionals in the comments, don't go crazy. But let's just say we'll just use the plus and the minus, red for plus and minus for negative, just to make it a little easier to wrap our heads around. Even though, you know, AC waves technically don't have a direct plus and don't have a direct minus. But what we'll end up doing is if we wanted to test the signal across the diode, what we would do is we would find where the two points are. So here and here. One side of the diode, other side of the diode. And what we can do here is we will find the positive, the quote unquote positive, and or the red side, and we will match that with our scope probe. So this is technically the red side, and we would put it there, and we would take our negative, which would be our ground, and we would take them there and put it on the other side. So technically, what is in between the two probes is the signal that we're measuring. And since it's the diode that's in between, that's what we're going to be measuring, because it's in between the two scope probes. Now, we could move these over, and again, we would match the closest point to the positive. So from here, is the positive. So this point here across the resistor is the closest, and that's where we would put our red, our, po our positive, and then this point here is the negative, or the closest point to the quote-unquote negative. So we would put our black, our negative scope probe there. And now we would get a different signal because we would be doing, because what's in between the two scope probes is the resistor. And again, if we wanted to test the whole circuit, that's what you would do. We would put it, you know, in between the two. So again, the red is here, the black is here, and then you would test, you know, both what's coming across the, res the diode and the resistor. So let's actually give this a try. Now currently, we have nothing on the scope, because again, we don't have the wires hooked up to anything. But if we come down, so, we'll take our scope probes, 
And like we mentioned before, there's our diode. So we want the positive of our scope leads to be as close to the positive of the signal. And we'll do the same with our, our ground. Attach that there. And you can see that what's in between is the diode. So right, here's the positive coming across to the diode and then to the negative. And if we look at the scope, there is the signal that we're getting across the diode. And you can see that it's a half wave rectification because it's a single diode. And it's allowing the negative portion of the wave to bypass, but not the positive. And that's why it's flat. Because diodes technically let uh, electricity only go one way. So in this case, based on the way we have it set up, we have the negative coming through, but not the positive. So that's why we're seeing the, the uh, peak here for the negative, but it's flat up at the top because the diode is rectifying the signal. Now, if we come back down and we do this for our resistor. So we'll take our negative wire and we'll attach it as right as close on the negative side here. And that in between our resistor. So now that we've taken the scope uh, the scope probes and put it in between the resistor here. That's what we're going to get. So again, coming off positive, you know, from the resistor, you know, to the negative. And if you look at the scope, we're getting a completely different signal. Why? Because we're ha we're measuring what the signal is across the resistor, and that's what we're getting, right? Because now we're measuring across the resistor. And what we'll do, let's, like we mentioned before, let's say we want to do the whole circuit. So we'll get as, well, the negative's already as close to the negative, right? And we will put this across the diode and the resistor. So if you look, now what's in between the two scope probes is the entire circuit. So the diode and the resistor. So, you know, it's coming from the negative across the diode across the resistor and to the negative, or I should say it's coming off the positive to the diode, to the resistor, and back up to the negative. And look, there's the wave that we're getting. And it's a completely different one than the two other before, because this time we're doing the entire circuit. Now, a couple other things to notice is let's go back and take a quick look at the thing we had, the waveform that we had on our resistor here. And if you notice, the little peaks are pointing upwards. Now it's important to notice where you're, ha you're putting your wires and what orientation, because if you get it backwards, it will flip your wave. For example, let's turn our wires around. So now you've noticed that we've flipped The orientation of our wire. So the positive is where the neg so the positive end of the scope probe is where the negative part of the signal is, or at least the sig um, audio generator. And then the negative part of the scope probe is where the positive part of the signal is. And if you look, the signal is reversed because we reversed our leads. So again, if you get anything kind of weird, that's also another thing to note. The last thing to kind of mention is if you see anything kind of funky, like this for instance, you may or may not see this, depending on what type of scope you have, but if your waves are moving or rocking and you're just getting like these weird patterns like this, if you look down, and this will be located in different parts, you have trigger level. Now, if I set mine to auto or automatic, you'll get this. But if I adjust this and I set this right at the, around the zero mark, 
you'll see the wave is a little more stable. Now again, newer scopes kind of have these problems figured out and you really won't see it. But again, older scopes or more analog scopes, you might need to fiddle with this if you're getting these kind of problems. So just two things to kind of be aware of, right? So since we talked about the two different components here, the resistor kind of being one section and the diode kind of being another, when you start to scale this up to bigger devices like radios and televisions and other, you know, large electronics, you can kind of think of, again, in sections like what we did here with our resistor and diode. So just for a matter of thing, maybe you can take, you have a, let's just an AM radio, for example. So now that we've drawn out our basic AM radio circuit, right, because again, here's our antenna, here's our coil, our variable capacitor, this makes up our tank circuit, the diode for rectification, an amplifier, and the loudspeaker. We can break this into sections like we did before, and we can do the measurements the same way. Just like we could do one across the diode and one across the resistor, we can kind of do the same thing. If we wanted to make a measurement across the, the tank circuit, so the coil and the capacitor, we can put one here, one lead of our scope here, another here, and then in between would be the tank circuit. So the coil and the capacitor, because, you know, there's where the circuit is. If we wanted to view was coming across the diode, we would go down to the two points here, across the diode. We would do one here and one there, and now what's in between is the diode. Again, if we wanted to come what's coming in before the amplifier, same thing. We would go to these two points. Measure across there, and if we wanted to come what's and we wanted to measure what's across the loudspeaker and coming out of the amp. We could do across the, the amplifier, the outputs of the amplifier right before the loudspeaker. That would give us the me measurement. Yeah. So by breaking this up like we've done, we can measure the different components and see, you know, if there's a problem, we can measure um, you know, to make sure each part is working and figure out, and if it's not, that's probably where your problem is. And you can, you know, test and see the different waves and how each component is affecting the wave or signal or whatever it is based on what schematic and circuit that you're using. Now, again, you can scale this up to larger device, even larger devices like AM, FM radios, televisions, so on and so forth. And that's basically it. If you found this video to be helpful, interesting, or you just learned something new, or any of the above good reasons, consider subscribing to this channel. If you like this video, you might like some of the previous videos I did on electronics test equipment. I'll throw a playlist up on your screen right now. Also, I have some other interesting electronic and technology videos. I'll also put one up on your screen right now. But in any which way, I hope you enjoyed this video, and of course, thanks for watching.